to be honest, I should be coming out here tonight, not now, because we're going to Monday Night Raw, and it's right down the road from this place. I don't know why I'm driving here now, thinking about it after I just drove for the past five minutes. Uh. What's going on, Hammerheads? Welcome back to the Hammer Channel. Today, we're going right now to pick up some amazing pops from my buddy Marco from the Philippines. He and I have been talking for quite a while, uh, for, actually for about over, two, uh, over a year, over maybe a year and a half, two years now because he knew what kind of pops that I always uh, collected and he was able to get these really expensive pops that he literally said to me in the past, here, make a list, I'll get them and I'll give them to you for cheaper than what the actual value for them is. I always was like, yeah, 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 it was a scam, 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 but no. This man delivered them, not the uh, Pop Asia re-releases, but he actually delivered the amazing uh, original release Pops. And since then, I uh, have been uh, amazed with him. Even just yesterday, he messaged me, hey, I actually seen you in the Philippines uh, Fanatic Day Out video in the Philippines because I was asked by the, uh, from Nico, the man who runs the Philippines for Funko's Day Out to send a little uh, support video for them. Uh, I asked them afterwards if there was anybody else that, that they actually uh, showed support in the video and it was, they said no. I was like, oh, well that was nice and awesome for that. So it was funny that he was able to go and see me in a video that was surprisingly in the Philippines. So uh, that, that was awesome, I'll play that video right now. What's going on my Filipino fanatics? Cletus Selden, the world ranked professional boxer and Funko Pop fanatic here. And I want to wish you guys the very best fun days in the Philippines. I seen the film, I seen you guys were in the movies. It was amazing. Hopefully one day I can make it out there and I wish you guys the very best. Boom! We're going right now to pick up two. Asia Thor uh, released pops. There's two of them, there's two different stickers, and there is a alien Toy Story pop. Working with Marcos is very easy because, you know, me and him were debating on prices beforehand, which we normally do, normally don't do, but we understand the, the value of the pops at the time that we negotiated. Now, when I went and negotiated for the Alien Pop, it wasn't as high as it was right now at $180. It was back when I negotiated, it was $120. So, I'm very patient with him, so I don't really mind waiting, because obviously, I, I, I barely unbox the pop that I have now. So, even though the pop was valued at much higher at the time of the actual uh, pickup, he was able to sell it to me at $120 when we originally did the uh, negotiating for it, even though technically we didn't even talk about it at the time, like we did with the uh, Thor Pops, because I had, we negotiated on those. I'm pretty pumped to get these guys. I'm pretty excited to bring them back to the house and do unboxing of one of them and uh, add another Toy Story Pop to the line, especially the Alien one, because you can never have too many of those. My collection keeps growing. I did uh, go two days without buying a pop, so we're gonna have to reset that on the live stream. Still waiting for my sub button as well from YouTube so we can get that rolling. And uh, should be a good little trip. I'm not gonna do any uh, bullshit little clips in between. Wait, hey, let me show you my little time lapse of, uh, of all the shit that I see because it's literally just a straight road with cars. I'm sweating in the car. Let me go turn up the uh, air and uh, rock out to some cock music. Let's go. All right, we're here now. I don't know if he wants me to go in his house and I get killed or murdered. So I'm just gonna leave my camera out here and if you guys find me, this is actually what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, let's go knock. Boom, as always, I didn't get killed. I did not get killed. We got the alien, we got the Asia, and we got the Simply Toys one. Uh, this one's gonna stay in the box, obviously. There's less of them produced. And we got another Alien Pop. Pretty pumped. It's from 2000 and... 
11. Wow, that's freaking incredible. All right, let's go back home. We got a 20 minute ride. Wow, what a freaking hole and hunt. Okay, let's say, why is that? But they're actually clear and there's nothing in them. What a hole and hunt. These things, these two and the alien pop, literally traveled all the way from the Philippines on the plane and was delivered to me. Well, I went and picked them up. The guy literally said he was going through security and they asked him, oh, what are, you, are you reselling these? He's like, no, absolutely not. Uh, they're for his kids. And uh, the Marcos uh, helped me out with getting a great price. I believe this is his brother or some kind of family member to him that I was able to pick these up on Long Island, which was nice. And uh, it's pretty awesome to get the story and the backing of how like these Asian pops actually got here. It's uh, pretty cool, you know. They literally put my order in, oh, I don't know how long ago, and was able to get them and was delivered. Uh, got them at a great price. I paid $220 for these two and the alien, which I have right here. I took it out of that shitty protector it was in, but this alien's from 2011. 2011. That's insane. The box feels like it's from 2011. I'm going to leave that to the side, and I'm going to give you my review of the Thor Glow in the Dark Asia release Funko Pop. Glows in the Dark, I said, right? Right now. All right, so we have Thor Glow in the Dark. You see there's two stickers. There's actually another sticker. There's actually a total of 10,000 of these with the Asia exclusive being the highest and the Simply Toys being the lowest. The Asia exclusive was the 5,040 mark limited number. I don't know where they came up with that. This Simply Toys sticker was 1,980. Then there was an SF Cinema sticker that was a numbered size of 3,024. So I got the highest production one and the lowest production one. So which one we're going to take out of the box? Put the Simply Toys one to the side and talk about this one. They're both the same. Different stickers. Um, and the good thing is it's true to the word that they're still making only 10,000 pops for exclusives. Not 15, 20, or 30 yet. So. We're still in luck. Um, I did see many pictures of these, so don't worry if you didn't get it yet. Because the prices for these are always crazy. Now, this pop here should have been a San Diego Comic Con. Because it is literally one of the best parts of the entire movie almost. Like, literally, this is Thor's best part. There's a reason why he's a god, and it proves it in this scene. I'm not going to say any spoilers, but with this pop, it's like, I can't believe that uh, after watching the film and seeing it in hand, that we got this as just a uh, as an exclusive, because it's incredible. He is a glow in the dark. You can see the Asia exclusive sticker, and he's number 286 in the line. I'm really disappointed that they didn't put the glow-in-the-dark eyes, those blue eyes, on the actual box art. It literally could have cost them an extra cent per item, so I wish they did that. Uh, when I'm just talking about the box here, the sticker looks awesome. This is like the first Asia sticker. This is my first Simply Toy sticker, so that's pretty cool. Now let me take this guy out of the box because I am going to have some fun with this. Yeah, it did come with a insert, uh, just like the rest of them. They got rid of the Smuggler Bounty or the Marvel Collector Corp uh, inserts that they put inside each box. If it's Disney, DC, uh, Marvel, or Star Wars, yeah. So out of the box, right away, you can see that baby blue just sticking out. This thing looks sick out of the box. He does have the Stormbreaker in his left hand. He's not holding the hammer. Hella broke it back in Thor Ragnarok. So he now has the Stormbreaker. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but that is part of Groot on the handle right there. The eyes are glowing in the dark. The chest is glowing in the dark. And the Stormbreaker is glowing in the dark. He does have a black armored vest and pants with boots that have a little bit of silver. On his hands, he does have gloves that go all the way up to his forearms, 
which is pretty neat. And on the back, it has a design on his uh, the back of his vest. On his face, you will notice right away that he's not missing an eye. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but he does get his eye back in the film. He does have a scar still there, but he does have two eyes now. And they're like kind of shaded on the back end of it. So it really actually makes that light blue glow in the dark really pop out. He does have that Thor, almost Captain America look around his, uh, his haircut and his beard. They did get away with having him with long hair. He actually recommended to get his hair cut off in the film. He wanted to change his character back in Thor Ragnarok and um, they actually went for it and they loved it. When you look at the Stormbreaker you can see that it's not a hammer it's more of an axe hammer you can say it's more like an axe and it's much longer than uh, his previous hammer. It's literally two maybe three times as long as the other one which is pretty neat because it's actually how it is in the film. The scene when he gets this hammer or axe or whatever you want to call it, Stormbreaker, it is epic and it's amazing and I don't know what else to say because he is damn good as a god. He's not your normal uh, hero in these films. He is a god and he proves it in the film. It's amazing the amount of uh, power that this man, this superhero actually has when he shows up. I enjoyed the film. It was one of the best films. It's a uh, 10 out of 10, 10 years in the making kind of film. I highly recommend it. All right, so that was my quick review of it. Let's uh, finish this all up and talk about it. I'm just going to leave these guys just like this. Look at this. It's amazing. I can't believe I got two of them. I've been asked if I'm going to be selling the other one. No, I'm not. I'm going to keep this one in my collection. This one's going to go on the shelf like always. I'm an idiot. I know. I highly do recommend this pop for you guys. I was able to negotiate it with somebody who was in the Philippines who just literally put it back on his buddy or his, his family member to ship back to me and be able to have me pick it up for $50. I think that is more than fair for this pop. Even after the hype cools down, I can still just see this pop at $50. I was very happy and glad that um, uh, Marcos didn't try to upsell me because originally he wanted at 60 and I wanted 40 and we settled with 50 which was perfect. Highly recommend this one. The Alien, oh my god, I now have two in my collection. That's actually going to go on a pop stack because it's from 2011. So sick and uh, satisfying to uh, have another Disney, basically a grail to have in the collection and that, to be in perfect shape for, for a box from that old. I want to thank you all for um, tuning into this video. It was a hunt. This pop is amazing. Highly recommend this. And um, all of the other Marvel uh, exclusives are off the chart. I don't know, man. This whole entire series is going out of my mind and mind blowing in general. Normally, I don't do like just single pop reviews, but uh, I think it was well deserving of this video. Let me know in the comment section below, were you able to get the Thor Asia release one? If you did, which sticker did you get? Or which one are you after? Are you after the Simply Toys, the bigger sticker? Or are you simply after the Asia exclusive sticker? I know a lot of you guys are all sticker fanatics, just like myself. Let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you guys here next time on Life of Cletus. Another! You tell anybody who's a collector, besides a pop collector, that you have a mint box from 2011, they would laugh at you 100% because they've been collecting their action figures and micro machine cars and their comic books since they were five in 1955. <laughs> Down 54, where should we put this for you? Um, on this shelf for you to watch? Or should I put it like this and put another one? I don't know. But I do gotta say, these things look freaking awesome here. Should I take them down? Should I move them? I don't know. Too much work.